Live. Mike Sembravivi, also WrestlingObserver.com, has noted the death of Paul Orndorff. Announced it today on Instagram, his son. And uh, Paul Orndorff broke into wrestling a year after I was born. And he wrestled for a long time. And, you know, the final video that we saw of Paul Orndorff, obviously suffering from dementia. And there are many people that suffer from dementia that weren't pro wrestlers. But there's going to be a lot of pro wrestlers that have problems later on in life. And the reason I bring it up with Paul Orndorff is not only because of the video, but I don't really know a lot about it. But Paul Orndorff not only did professional wrestling, but Paul Orndorff also was a football player. And obviously lots of uh, bumps, bruises, bangs, bumps, etc. playing football. But also, before he got into professional wrestling, uh, we could talk more with Dave about this tonight, but Paul Orndorff had participated in some form of very early MMA. He was, I don't know if it was just bare-knuckle fighting or what exactly it was, but the fact of the matter is he took a lot of beatings in many different disciplines throughout his life. And obviously, he's best known for his pro wrestling. And I was always a fan of, of Paul Orndorff. I thought that he was a, I thought he was a great worker. I thought he was a great heel. I thought he was a great babyface. Obviously, a very important part of the first ever WrestleMania, which there's a lot of, of, a lot of stories in wrestling about, oh, you know, if this hadn't worked out or if this hadn't worked out. WrestleMania, if that had not worked out, we have no idea how the history of pro wrestling would have been affected by that, what pro wrestling would be today, if pro wrestling would have existed. Obviously, it was one half of the main event. And, uh, you know, the, the vast, the, the, he was really, uh, not to be disrespectful, but he was kind of the fourth wheel in that tag team match because Hulk Hogan obviously was Hulk Hogan. And Mr. T was the biggest television star in America. And uh, Roddy Piper, the Roddy Piper Hulk Hogan uh, feud was a bigger feud at the time than Hulk Hogan and Paul Orndorff. But Paul Orndorff was in the match and uh, he was an important part of the build. And he obviously went from there to World Championship Wrestling. And uh, he even had a comeback in World Championship Wrestling during the Monday Night Wars. And there was a uh, very famous moment where he actually took a bump in a match in World Championship Wrestling. And he ended up uh, paralyzed for a short period of time. And uh, that was pretty much the end of his active career. But uh, very funny guy. Uh, very good worker. Had, obviously, the great physique for uh, most of his career. Uh, very sad to hear the death of Paul Orndorff. And, uh, Mike, any thoughts? When you think of pro wrestling, you know, you think of a, a, a guy with... You, you would stereotype as an old pro wrestler. He was that guy. He talked about the stuff he did outside the ring. Bar fights, no matter what it was, Paul Orndorff would be your guy. Just unbelievably believable because... That's who he was, an intense guy. He was charismatic. He had incredible physical charisma. When you looked at the body, how he moved, and he was a natural for pro wrestling. You could see with the reputation he has why a guy like Eddie Graham down in Florida would be attracted to a guy like Paul Orndorff, and that's where he was from. He was from Florida. He was a big high school uh, football star. He was a college star as well, too, the Brandon Bull. And then he goes and starts his career, and almost immediately, in the most rugged area down in Tri-State, which was Oklahoma and Louisiana and Arkansas, tough people down there to perform in front of, really hard, tough trips, just with usually a hardened-looking lineup that he would be you know, breaking into and old, crusty veterans working with, and he always held his own. And by the time he got to the WWF in January of 1984, he may have been... In some ways, the fifth wheel, because you look at the six people that were involved in that match with Bob Wharton and Superfly Schnooka, and star power-wise, he was most certainly fifth. But work-wise, he was number one. And his ability to work and how good he was in the ring sometimes gets forgotten about, but will we'll never get forgotten about for people from that time 
is Hulk Hogan was unbeatable. Hulk Hogan walked on water no matter who it was. And yes, we saw him in peril sometimes, but we rarely saw him uh, suffer the what Sting would always suffer and getting, you know, the, 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 the best, uh, somebody else getting the best of him. That never happened to Hogan, but it happened with Paul Orndorff. And for a lot of people... The first big major heel turn they ever saw was Paul Orndorff turning babyface on Piper, luring Hogan in, and then turning on him again and having Bobby Heenan at his side, which, of course, led to 60,000 people or whatever it was, 70,000 people at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, which for some of the longest time, that was legitimately the biggest house that they ever had. Forget about what they claimed about a WrestleMania. Exhibition Stadium was their biggest one up in Toronto, so... He was a major star, and as you mentioned, his career continued on. He was a winner everywhere that he went, incredibly intense. Then doing work for WCW afterwards, we got the famous story about Big Van Vader in the locker room. Even Paul Orndorff, even with that atrophied arm, in shower shoes, you had a huge Big Van Vader who didn't want to go out and do promos. They get into it, and in shower shoes with that atrophied arm against that huge man, from everyone's accounts of it, or at least that's what the 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 lore is Paul Orndorff beat up Vader really really badly so if you ever thought he was he a tough guy or not that's one of the stories that everybody repeats that seems to be absolutely true including Paul Orndorff who had his own version of that but R.I.P. just uh, very sad we talked about the tape when it came out not probably how he would have liked to have been remembered because every time he was put into the public eye. He wanted to be the badass that he was for most of his career. So Godspeed to Paul Orndorff and the best to his family. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.